Okay, so this is the tutorial on how to workflow your senior portrait projects. So I've just inserted my SD card. You can see it right here. Um, we're going to be doing this in Lightroom. So we had kind of had a brief introduction to it. You guys did some tutorials while I was gone, so hopefully you just have a, a really good sense of just how everything is laid out in Lightroom. Um, it is my favorite program. I like it even more than Photoshop, and I probably do most of my work within Lightroom as a professional photographer because it allows you to go in and really manipulate those colors. Um, for this project, you're going to be shooting in RAW, which again will give you more options in regards to your post-productions, um, things that you can do in there. So give me a second for this to load up. We'll fast forward through this point. It's thinking. Spinning wheel of death. Need some Jeopardy music to go with this. Okay, so we're going to import these. So under the library tab, we click on import. We're going to import our photographs. Here, do not want that. And for that, this looks like stage left of Hamlet. That's my daughter. Oh, I got some holiday pictures. Let's get through those really fast. There we go. And there's our guy, Pete. Right. Was he something crazy, guys? Sure. Let's see. Give this thing a little bit. That's my twin sister right there. They're not in. Yeah. She's a lot prettier. Oh, no. Yeah, let's be perfectly honest. I would be one ugly woman. I'm fully aware of that, and I'm okay with that. All right, so we're going to import these. Okay, so once these load up, um, we're going to stay in the library section. And let's see here. We got that one. Close this for now. Okay, as these are importing, um, since we're in the libraries tab here, we have um, our catalog, and one of those things is quick collection. So if we, well, that's important. So I'm gonna switch over there really fast. So this is actually leftovers from last year's senior portrait uh, demonstration. Um, so this is. Uh, Annalena, she was a foreign exchange scholar. We're just going to remove her from the quick collection. There's really no way for me to properly respond to that. <laughs> okay. Um, but if you go down here into our libraries collection under 2017, we should find the very bottom one. Should be our session with Pete. And right off the bat, you can see these, these turned out pretty well. I mean, it looks like I can see some good ones. What you're going to do is um, you're going to go through a yes or no process, okay? You're going to look at the image, and it's either going to be in focus, and it's going to be like a, a pleasing-looking image, or it's not. If it's not, it's a no. If, it's a, if, if it hits those other requirements, then it's a yes. And we're going to put all of the yeses into um, a quick collection which will then allow us to go in and look at just that specific group of photographs and then we can narrow it down further from that. Because I can tell you, taking 300 photographs and getting your, your top 1%, because that's essentially what you're giving me, takes a little bit of, um, you need to go through and, and really pick the best. And I can tell you as a photographer, generally most of the time you only want to show your best work. So you don't want to show your client the blurry photos, you don't want the eyes closed and things like that. 
Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through, I'm going to edit these three photographs. So um, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be doing some blemish removal, teeth whitening, um, and a little bit of skin modification. So smoothing out, skin smoothing, and things like that. Uh, okay, so it looks like they've uploaded. So what we're looking for here, like I said, we want to get this narrow this down to our top 1%. Oh, don't know what those are. Okay, so we're going to make these a little bigger, try to get three on the screen at a time. There we go. If they look a little blurry right now, it's just because they uh, um, are still loading. All right, so I like that one. So when I click on it, you'll notice that it goes from the white to the darker color here. And if I scroll up to my quick collection, there's now one image in there. Okay. All right. So that one's good. I like that one. So it's just a simple yes or no. I like that one. Cool. Need a couple without the sunglasses on. That's good. Yep, like that one too. All right, so simply go through. So if you like it, it's in. There's really no, no thinking beyond that. All right, so these are kind of going for that sunburst look, like that. I like that one. Let's see what we can do with that. You also notice that there's a little icon there as well, telling you that it's in there. Not that one. It's <laughs> good. All right, that's it. So now we have 15 images in our quick collection. So from there, it should be a little easier to determine our top three. So much as I like this one, um, I'm gonna. It's too hard to see his face, so that one's out. And we can make them a little bigger now, and we can really get an idea of like make sure things are in focus and things like that. So let's see. Let's make it a little smaller, real quick, side by side. Okay. This one's a little too dark for my taste. His eyes look weird in these two. Let's see. These three are all very similar, these top three, or these three right here. So if I'm only gonna pick one, and I think I'm gonna go with that one, so I'm gonna lose that one, and that one. So, can't use one with sunglasses, so we're taking those out, even though I like them. All right, so now we're down to five. These two are very similar. I think I like, Ooh, which one? What do you guys think, three or four? Well, I'm not concerned with color because I'm going to adjust the colors in post production. All right, so now we got three totally different images. All right, so now we have our images to edit. So I'm going to switch over to the develop module here. Um, and the first thing we're going to do, we'll start with this one here. Um, we are going to, what I like to do a lot of times is just uh, start with, I can hit Command A. On the keyboard, it's going to select all my images, and I just do kind of a, an auto really quick just to kind of see what the computer do to give me an idea. Most of the time, I feel like the image overexposed or the computer overexposes the images, so I know I'm going to probably back these down a little bit. Like, this is a little too bright, um, it's a lot brighter on my screen if you can see my screen over here compared to what's on the board. Um, so, I'm just going to start with um, scrolling down a little bit here, and I'm going to go to my tonal curve, my, my tone curve here. And this is usually the first thing I start with. Um, let's see. 
Oh, that's not it. Where to go? Sorry, I'm scrolling a lot. I'm not seeing what I'm looking for. The Tony, no. Ooh, what happened? Everything went back and white. There we go. Oh, sorry. Here it is. Look forward to all the time at the top. So up here, tone. We have exposure, contrast. We have highlights, shadows, blacks, and whites. I always like to kick up the, especially in portraits, kick up the highlights a little bit and increase the blacks a little bit. Um, the black, when you decrease the blacks a little bit um, to the left here, it's going to make things a little bit darker in the image. Um, and this is where things kind of get personal is we're going to really zoom in and like I said, um, working with high schoolers here, so acne is part of the, the, the package here. Um, so accepting that. Um, so we have a couple of tools up here. One of those is the uh, spot removal, the uh, keyboard core, keyboard shortcut for that is Q. I'm gonna click on that. And you'll see we have a, a little dot here. I'll turn that really fast, let me zoom in really fast. So pressing the space bar allows me to zoom in. You have a drop down box here where you can choose how much you're zoomed in. So you can go 1 8th, 1 16th is where we were just back out. But we're going to go, let's see, that's too close. It's about a 4 to 1. Still too close. Keep going up here. There we go. So this gives we're able to see things in there. Um, and using that spot removal. Button. So using your bracket keys on your computers, you can make the brush bigger or smaller. Essentially, it says a brush. And you're just going to go in and you're going to go nuts. You're going to zap out any red blemishes that you can see. Now what it does, it pulls from a different section of the so you, of the face. So you want to make sure it's pulling from a, a section that um, you don't want to replace a zit with a zit kind of thing. Or you don't want it to be in a hair section. And when we do the before and after, you'll be like, whoa. So right now I'm just looking for blemishes. Um, that come, brings us to the question of what do you do with a mole? Now, I'll give you a real world example. There was a, a nice lady I was doing a photo shoot for, and she had a big mole on her face. Um, do you remove it or do you leave it is the question, right? Do you ask? Um, so well, no, because that's kind of an awkward question, right? Uh, what do you want to do about that thing on your face? Um, <laughs> right? Uh, so if they bring it up, yeah, then uh, you can uh, you can definitely um, so remove it for them. But if it's if it's not if it's not brought up, because I usually ask my clients, um, are there any special requests? So that's their opportunity to tell me, oh yeah, take care of this thing on my face. Uh, but most of the time, there are ways to reduce the effect of it, but you do want to leave it. Um, and I can, I'm going to show you um, how to do something like that. So right now, we're just kind of pulling from sections, removing some, some acne. We're also going to smith, skin, smooth out Pete's face a little bit, uh, smooth his skin out. We'll just pretend that never happened. Yep. Have you ever gone through and done this and like the like I look at the photo after you like the makeup like, touch the brush stuff and all that and you're like, whoa, that's like not my face? No, never had any complaints. He's got pretty eyes. Pinky eyebrow mustache. <laughs> <laughs> totally do that. Yeah. 
Okay, so that's pretty good. Um, let's see, I got a couple here. Let's. Okay, so let me zoom back out here. Let's see, let's go to like a, a little more. There we go. All right, so we turn this off. So by pressing, there's the uh, the bracket key, right next to your two bracket keys, there's a backslash key. By pressing that, you can actually see a before and an after. So there's the before, and there's the after with the edits we've done so far. Hmm. All right. So from there, we're going to do some skin smoothing. So over here, you have brushes, which is this one right here. And one of those brushes, so adjustment brushes, if you click this cut drop down box right here, you can choose. We have soften skin. So we're just going to kind of go through, and you don't have to be super crazy um, with this. Um, I'm going to turn on this little checkbox here because it'll turn everything red, and I kind of see where I'm painting. I'm just going to go through and paint. Um, Try to avoid hair. If you get a little bit of hair, like I just did there, that's fine. But like, we don't want to get his eyebrow. If you overselect by holding down the option or the Alt key or Option key on your, if you're using a Mac, you can see it goes from a plus to a minus. You can unselect an area. I'm gonna go through. Let's see. Let's see. Let's smooth out his skin for us. And you can again. Say again. It looks like a massive sunburn. Right. <laughs> Um, so there's one a tip I want to give you guys is don't forget to do the neck. Um, nothing like smoothing out a face and forgetting the neck. It just it never matches up and it looks weird. Um, I've seen ones where people forget to do arms and hands and it just looks weird. Um, so if you smooth out one part, make sure you smooth out any available skin showing. So you're going to go through and you're going to do this for each of your images. Now you're going to shoot on Tuesday and Wednesday. You're going to have Thursday, well actually no, uh, we're going to have to edit when we come back from break because Thursday I got a special thing planned for you. Um, but you need to make sure your images are taken before break. Because when we come back, um, the guys, this is essentially your your final project. Because you'll have that last week we're together to uh, edit. So see how I over selected there? That's fine because I'm just going to come back here with the alt and just unselect that. Like I said, don't forget his, his neck. Right. Let's see here. Clear the skin of this color on any available skin. Any available skin, yep. Is this recommended for all the portions that you take? Yep. Um, and there are softwares that will do this for you out there. Um, if you look at your yearbook photographs from LifeTouch, they have a software that automatically goes through and does, it, does this for you. Um, You'll notice, like, if you look really close, um, it detects eyes, and it goes through and, and uh, softens the skin on everybody. And I'm get, I would only guess, but they probably have a male and a female version, because generally girls get a little more. Um, let's see, I missed a few spots there. That's the nice thing about the red; you can get a really good idea of where you painted and what you missed. Okay, so over here we have the amount. So since Pete is a guy, we are not going to give him the 100%. We're going to give him like the 80% um, effect here. So let's see here. No, will be 76. Good enough. All right. So turn the brush off. And again, before, okay. after. Wow. That is next to your bracket keys, the, the backslash key. Now I know she's got still a little bit of blemish here, so let me just go grab that really quick. I'm just gonna make a nice big brush. I'm just gonna sweep it through here, and you can go, you can do brushes over brushes. That's fine. I'm just gonna pull some face skin here. Oh, too much. All right. All right. So pretty good. Um, the last thing we're going to do is we want to look at our white balance as well. So, where are we? What kind of lighting we got here? Uh, Natural lighting. Shade. We're in the shade, right? So I hit the I hit this white balance option here, and we have options. If you shot if you had shot this in JPEG, you would have two. You would have as shot and auto. 
and then um, you can do custom. Um, but since we're in shade, let's click on shade and see what that does. All right, yep, it adds a little warm to it, which is a more natural look for Pete there. Um, but because we added yellow, what does it do to his teeth? Makes them yellow. Makes them yellow, right? We don't like yellow teeth. So let's fix that. Um, so again, we're going to grab our adjustment brush here. We do have teeth whitening. And we're going to come in here and we're going to whiten Pete's teeth. Just like that. Boom. I love to do it because you can like see the effect in like the little square up top. Right. Okay, so let's zoom back out here. Okay, so uh, again, four. After. Which one looks better? After. Of course, the after. Now, I like this image. It's cool, but this is for the yearbook, right? So we're talking senior portraits here. So what's wrong with this image? Reflection's okay. The reflection isn't the same as the view. Right? Well, yeah. I didn't think about that. But <laughs> what orientation does it need to be for the yearbook? Oh, uh, that's right. It needs to be a portrait, not a landscape image, right? So we have to crop it. So you have a crop option here, and then you do have some um, options. Now, for this project, um, I'm asking for 5 by 7s because this is going to be the orientation that we use for, for the yearbook. So since I've selected that, it's going to keep my proportions for me. But all i got to do is drag it to the left, and now it puts it into a portrait orientation. I don't have to worry about... Um, the reflection if I do that then right Annalise and I'm gonna bring it in here I want to leave just a little bit of headroom here because that's too much room there because this is the shot essentially we're looking for all right and there we go so now we have our senior portrait for the yearbook and then again here's the before and the after And that's essentially what you're going to do. And you're going to do this for all of your images. Now, I made the mistake of so having this selected as I was working on this one. So I need to uncrop this. Yeah, that's not right. So we're just going to go back to original, I believe, isn't that? There we go. Same on this one. <laughs> Much better. All right. So that's essentially what you can do. I'm not going to record me working on all of these images here, um, but you're going to go through and you're going to do that to your top three images. And that's what you're going to be submitting into Google Classroom. The cool part is, is if you are a, a junior or a